Hello friends, this video on respiration in plants part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. About this. So now it is time to talk about aerobic respiration in detail. So let us try to understand the steps of aerobic respiration. As I said, it is a multi-step process. The beginning is glucose and the end is carbon dioxide, water and a lot of energy in the form of ATP molecules. So let us see what are those steps which will actually make this conversion happen. So the entire process of respiration, right now we will be talking about the aerobic respiration. It has four steps, glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain or electron transport system or ETS, whatever you call it. So these are the four steps which together will lead to the conversion of glucose into carbon dioxide, water and a lot of energy. So first we will start our discussion with glycolysis. So now this step that is the first step of respiration glycolysis is a common step to both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So in aerobic as well as anaerobic the only difference is the presence or absence of oxygen. So the first step that is glycolysis it does not require oxygen. That's why this is the first step in case of anaerobic respiration also. Right. So what, what comes to your mind with the word glycolysis? Glyco, it is something related to glucose, glycogen, something like that. So glyco would mean sugar. Lysis, what is the meaning of lysis? It means to split or splitting. So glycolysis means splitting sugar and that is what we are going to do. Sugar here, we, as I said, the starting material of our uh, respiration process is glucose. So we are going to split glucose. We are going to break down glucose into simpler components. So that is what we will do in glycolysis. So it is the process in which glucose is broken down into two molecules of pyruvic acid. So glucose will be broken down into two molecules of pyruvic acid. So what is glucose? Glucose is a six carbon compound. There are six carbon atoms present in glucose. But when you look at pyruvic acid, it is a three carbon compound. So there are three carbon atoms in one molecule of pyruvic acid. So glucose will be broken down into two pyruvic acid molecules. That is the agenda of glycolysis. So this is the glucose and this is your pyruvic acid. So if you see, this is a six carbon compound. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it forms two pyruvic acid. One, two, three. Again, one, two, three. So glucose will be broken down into these two, three carbon compounds. Now this glycolysis is also known as EMP pathway. Why is this called EMP pathway? From where did this it get EMP? E stands for Mden, M stands for Mirhoff, and P stands for Parnas. So Mden, Mirhoff, and Parnas, these were the three scientists who together described this scheme of sugar splitting for the first time. So or in other words, you can say that these three scientists together described glycolysis as a process for the first time. And that is why after the initials of their names, they, it is known as EMP pathway. Now this is again a multi-step process. So glycolysis itself is just the first step of the process of respiration and this glycolysis itself is also made up of 10 steps. So just imagine how many steps are involved in the entire process of the respiration. So now our job is to understand the 10 steps of this process of glycolysis. Now before we start understanding the steps, the question is where does glycolysis take place? So the question is where does glycolysis take place? Now glycolysis, the process will start with glucose. 
So let us first try to see where is glucose formed in a plant. So now this is your plant. So where does photosynthesis take place? It takes place in the leaves, right? So if photosynthesis takes place in the leaves, that means glucose is formed in the leaves. But glucose gets transported to different parts of the plant with the help of the flowing tubes, right? So the flowing tubes will transport the glucose to two different parts of the plant. When I say it will transport it to different parts of the plant, I mean to each and every cell present inside the plant body. So basically the glucose will reach each and every plant cell. So the glucose will enter the cytoplasm of the plant cell. So this is the, this part of the plant cell, glucose needs to be broken down into simpler form. So that's why glycolysis will take place in the cytoplasm of the plant cells. And this is the first breakdown of glucose. So we say that glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of the cells. So this process of glycolysis will take place inside each and every cell of the plant. So now let us look at the 10 step glycolysis process. We will start with step 1. So in step 1, in each and every step, now since we can understand that since it is a 10 step process, that means a lot of intermediate products will be formed because at each step, some product will be formed, right? So a lot of intermediates will be formed. A lot of enzymes play crucial roles in, role in each and every step. So we will talk about the starting material of each step, the product of each step and the enzyme which makes that step take place. So we'll talk about these three things. So for step one, the starting material is obviously glucose. Okay. Which enzyme participates in step one? There is an enzyme called hexokinase. And what is the product? The product is glucose 6-phosphate. So basically in this step, the 6-carbon glucose so glucose is a 6 carbon compound. So this 6 carbon compound will get converted into glucose 6 phosphate. So what is glucose 6 phosphate? That means on the 6th carbon a phosphate group is present. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is the 6th carbon and on the 6th carbon a phosphate group is present. Right? And how, how it happens? It happens in presence of the enzyme called hexokinase. And during this step, ATP is utilized. Now, the question is, from where do we get this extra phosphate? So that phosphate comes from ATP. So ATP will be utilized in this step. What is ATP? ATP, ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Triphosphate, that means there are three phosphate groups present in ATP. So this ATP, in presence of this enzyme hexokinase, will get converted into ADP, that is diphosphate. So two phosphate groups will be there. So what happens to the other phosphate group? So that extra phosphate group from ATP comes to this compound glucose and that is how it forms glucose 6-phosphate. So that is how glucose 6-phosphate is formed. So in this step ATP is utilized. So when we say ATP is utilized that means energy is utilized in this step. And what is this process called? The process where inorganic phosphate is added. That process is known as phosphorylation. Phosphorylation. So adding an inorganic phosphate group is known as phosphorylation. So let us look at the next step that is step 2. So what would be the starting material for step 2? Obviously the product of step 1. So the starting material here would be glucose 6-phosphate because this is what was formed in step 1. So in this step there is an enzyme called phosphoglucoisomerase. Now this, whenever you have an enzyme whose name ends with isomerase, that means that enzyme helps in changing or it helps in rearranging the molecular structure of a compound to convert it into its isomer. That is why the name isomer is. What, what are isomers? Isomers are those compounds which have the same molecular formula but they have different structures. So that means if there are six carbon atom in glucose six phosphate, its, uh, its uh, isomer will also have six carbon atoms but the way they are arranged will be different. 
so isomerase enzymes always help in converting one compound into its isomer so what would be the product here the product would be fructose 6 phosphate so now glucose and fructose if you compare the structure of glucose and fructose this is glucose and this is fructose so if you look at both of them both have one two three four five six six carbon atoms so here also it has one two three four five six again if you see the number of uh, hydrogen atoms as well as oxygen atoms are also same in both of them so their molecular formula are same but the way they are arranged is different so that is why glucose and fructose are isomers now due to different arrangements many of their properties also vary and that is why they are two separate um, compounds otherwise they would have been just the same thing right so in this case glucose 6 phosphate will get converted into fructose 6 phosphate so here what will happen so the the uh, starting material is also a 6 carbon compound something like this with a phosphate group at the 6 carbon atom and the product will also be the same a 6 carbon atom it is just that the arrangements will be different now I am not getting into the arrangements here I am just trying to tell you how many carbon atoms and how many phosphate groups will be there on both sides of the equation the next step in now in the next step your starting material will be the fructose 6 phosphate that is the product of step 2 so here fructose 6 phosphate and the enzyme is phosphofructokinase so what will this enzyme do? This will convert it into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Let us see how it happens. Now whenever you have enzymes with kinase, they generally make phosphorylation take place. See the first enzyme was also hexokinase, there also phosphorylation took place. Here also we will see what happens exactly. So you, here we start with fructose 6-phosphate. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 so this is fructose 6-phosphate. It has 6 carbon atom and 1 phosphate group. Right? So in presence of this enzyme phosphofructokinase, what will happen? It will again utilize one ATP. So this ATP will get converted into ADP. So tri triphosphate will become diphosphate. So that extra phosphate group will come and add on to this reactant. So as a result, the carbon atom you have is still 6 but now you will have two phosphate group. One was already existing and the other one will come from this ATP. So it becomes, so one phosphate group was already here and the other phosphate group gets added to the first carbon atom. Therefore it becomes fructose 1, 6 by phosphate. So if this is 1 and this is 6, so 1, 6 bisphosphate. So this is the product here. So here also if you see phosphorylation took place because inorganic phosphate was added to the compound. So here also phosphorylation takes place. So here again two molecules of ATP are utilized in this step. So here also ATP will get utilized. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.